Oregon football absolutely splattered Utah. They assassinated them in their own home stadium. The Utah Utes have not lost a home game with a full crowd since 2018. In Oregon, very quickly, they made themselves known and they made it evident that this game was not going to go in the Utes' favor. My prediction for this game was 35-33 to in favor of Oregon. I thought that Oregon would play this game close with Utah, but because of superior talent and a lack of injuries, better health, they would come out on top. I mean, Oregon entering this team, I think it was clear they were the better team. I think even if Oregon ended up losing this game, we would still view them as the better team than Utah. But Rice Eccles Stadium is a tough place to play. And Bo Nix has not had a great time on the road in his career, but he's changed. Road Bo Nix no longer carries any negative connotations or negative descriptions. Road Bo Nix is a quarterback who can go on the road, deliver clutch bullet passes on third down, and put you in positions to win even when your coaching staff or other parts of the roster are failing you, i.e. the Washington game. It was not Bo Nix's fault that Oregon lost in Husky Stadium. You can look at Dan Lanning and the secondary for that loss, and thankfully Dan Lanning accepted his role in that loss to Washington, as mentioned earlier. I especially mention that because Oregon, as we'll discuss later in this video, has the case to be the best team in the Pac-12 right now with how Washington has struggled, USC has two losses, Utah got blown out by Oregon, and then dominated by an Oregon State team that now has suffered two losses, being upset by both Washington State and Arizona. The Pac-12 is chaotic, and outside of that one blemish on the road to rival Washington, Oregon is nearly perfect. Not only do they have the most efficient offense in the Pac-12, they might have the most efficient defense in the Pac-12 as well. What a game by Dan Lanning, Will Stein, Tosh Lupoi, Bo Nix, Bucky Irving is looking like an elite running back, Jordan Birch, the defense, you name it. This was a perfect game by Oregon. If you were a fan of college football in general and you had no partisanship in this matchup, you probably got bored, maybe even frustrated by Oregon's dominance. But if you're a fan of Oregon or if you're a fan of, you know, elite teams coming alive and just killing it on the road or at home, you loved every second of this game. Welcome back, fellow football fanatics. It's your host, College Football with Sam. I love Utah as a program. Kyle Whittingham is an elite head coach. This game has no reflection on him. His roster suffers, has suffered rather through multiple season-ending injuries. Brant Cuthy is out for the year. Cameron Rising's out for the year. Lander Barton is out for the season. The running back room is dinged up. And the defense and offense as a result have not functioned at full capacity. I still think he's an elite head coach. And I love Utah as a program. To Oregon, Dan Lanning is improving as a head coach week by week. He will only get better as time goes on and as he learns more about the duties of being a CEO and managing all aspects of the game. Oregon's joining the Big Ten next season, and this right here, College Football with Sam, is the best Big Ten football channel on YouTube, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you can get notified when I post Big Ten football content and consequently next year, Oregon, Washington, UCLA, USC football content, along with all the other current 14 Big Ten programs. I'm trying to cover Oregon, Washington, UCLA, and USC more, just so I can get engaged with the fan bases. So if you like this channel, and I bet you do, share this video around, or at least share the channel around, so that other fans of the current four Pac-12 schools that will be joining the Big Ten next year can be familiarized with this channel. Comment your thoughts down below, like this video, hit the notification bell again so you can get notified when I release more college football content. And lastly, check out my Patreon page via the link in the description where I post my own predictions and picks for games that I don't cover in full videos and potential power picks every Power 5 matchup that occurs week by week, and also releases weekly power rankings with predictive point spreads and point totals. 
Um, potential power didn't have a great week against the spread. Overall, it's still over 500 against the spread, though, and it accurately predicted that Oregon would win and cover. It did a better job of predicting this game and several other top 25 games than I did. I mean, the Ducks just absolutely dismantled the Utah Utes in their own stadium, and that's not a good feeling for Utah. Utah was 1 of 3 on 4th down, 5 of 15 on 3rd down. They only had 13 total first downs. The Utes didn't even break 100 rushing yards. They didn't break 150 passing yards. They only had 241 total yards, and they settled for two field goals, and they were shut out despite having multiple opportunities to score in the second half. It was just not a good game for Utah whatsoever. Oregon owned them in the trenches. Oregon dominated them on third down. Oregon was perfect in the red zone when it came to scoring touchdowns. Utah, as we already mentioned a few seconds ago, could only help themselves by kicking field goals. They struggled to move the ball down the field. Unlike Utah, Bo Nix had a phenomenal outing. He personally, in my view, is the player of this game. Once again, he excelled on the road, much like he did against Washington. He threw no interceptions, but went 24 of 31 for 248 yards and two passing touchdowns. Right now, Bo Nix has an 85 quarterback efficiency rating, which is fourth nationally. He has 21 passing touchdowns, one interception, and 2,337 passing yards. He's completing 78% of his passes. He has a 178.6 passer rating, and he has 113 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns. Overall, phenomenal player. And that is not up for debate whatsoever. He has really grown compared to last year, and I think Will Stein, the offensive coordinator, is... A big part of that. You know, he helped develop Frank Harris at UTSA. Last time I remembered, Frank Harris was sadly injured, but Frank Harris over the past two seasons, three seasons, really great college quarterback, very underrated player in Jeff Trailer's system at UTSA. Will Stein comes to Oregon. We can clearly see that Bo Nix has matured as a passer. The offense is humming at a level that even last year's offense wasn't running at. They're scoring 45.5 points per game, and the Ducks are only allowing 15.6 points per game as well. I mean, this team looks championship caliber. Period. Amen. And comment down below whether you think they're the best team in the Pac-12, because I think that's a possibility. Washington has struggled defensively, and offensively at times, they're, as, as college football nerds um, Josh put it, they're very hot and then they're very cold. That's a great channel, by the way, college football nerds. is. I'm sure all of you have heard of them. Uh, if not, though, I'll link their channel down in the comment section. Washington, hot, cold, sometimes mediocre. Oregon is just hot all the time. I can't remember a game outside of the the first quarter or half against Stanford or the first half or first three quarters against Texas Tech where Oregon looked lethargic. I can't. Right now, Oregon is growing weekly. They had, you know, a closer than preferred game against Washington State, but they still put up 38 points. They were probably dealing with the emotions after the Washington game to go on the road and beat Utah by 29, and then only having Cal and USC left on the schedule, a road game at Arizona State, and then a rival and revenge spot against Oregon State in the Civil War on Friday the 24th at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That's 5.30 p.m. Pacific. Almost said specific. Um, shame on me. Pacific Standard Time. Oregon has an opportunity to win out Bo Nix is totally playing himself in the Heisman conversation. He has great numbers. Um, likely for Oregon, just looking at their schedule, them appearing in the Pac-12 championship game seems like a real possibility. If so, that's five more games for Bo Nix to continue to rack up yards and impress. He's a great player. He's an elite quarterback. 
No question about it. And you just, as, as an Oregon fan, you have to be pleased with his performance, with Bucky Irving's performance, with Troy Franklin's performance. Troy Franklin had several clutch catches. He had eight receptions for 99 yards and a touchdown. Franklin right now is 52 receptions for 867 yards, nine receiving touchdowns, and he's averaging 16.7 yards per reception. He's an, he's an incredible player. Freak athlete, long, tall, intelligent, knows how to get open, climb defenders, you name it. Just awesome wide receiver. And then Bucky Irving is the same type of player, except he's plugged in at the running back position. 101 carries, 732 yards, 8 rushing touchdowns. He's averaging 7.2 yards per rush. Bucky Irving is one of the top running backs in all of college football. Great player. Uh, for Utah, defensively, they have Cole Bishop, Junior Tufanu, and, I mean, they have their own great set of defensive players, and Oregon had to work hard. They had to work hard scoring in the fashion that they did, but they put up 21 points, 21 points in the first half. All of their touchdown drives, except for one, were of 50 yards or more. Three of them were of 75 yards or more, both scores in the first quarter and the opening Bucky Irving nine-yard touchdown run in the third quarter. So Oregon had to work, and still, they were able to convert five of ten on third down. They had 18 first downs. They averaged eight yards per pass attempt, 5.3 yards per rush attempt, just really an awesome game, and they won the turnover battle. They picked off Bryson Barnes twice. Oregon fumbled once, and when they fumbled, Utah only turned that into a field goal on a seven-play, 13-yard drive. So this defense for Oregon was able to bow up as well. Just every side of the football playing well for Oregon. I mean, it's incredible, honestly. Uh, Ross James, even even special teams, Oregon's punter, averaging 50 yards per punt, banging one inside the 20, having a touchback. Incredible performance by Dan Lanning's squad and his staff. And this team, you put them against Michigan, Ohio State, Georgia, a rematch with Washington, Florida State, Texas, uh, Oklahoma, LSU, Alabama. I mean, any team that can contend for a New Year's Six Bowl or a college football playoff spot, Oregon has a great chance to beat any of those teams from how they are playing right now. And they showed their ceiling, their potential, their poise. They showed everything that represents an elite team Saturday in Rice-Eccles Stadium. Let's talk about Utah. Because Utah, despite being a loser in this game, and we talk about winning teams. We talk about winners last here. We save the best for last, and we get the worst out of the way. I have a lot of respect for Utah. I really do. I think Kyle Whittingham is for sure a top 10 head coach nationally. I think it's more accurate to say that he is a top five, top six head coach. The way that this team, who got destroyed by Oregon, went on the road and beat a USC team who is so much healthier and so much more talented they are in the fashion they did is the definition of clutch. You have to appreciate who Utah is. They stick to their identity. When they're challenged, they bounce right back up. For the past two seasons, they have been hit rather early, you know, punched in the mouth, whether it was against BYU and San Diego State in 2021 or in 2022, whether it was the fact that they lost to Oregon later in the season, or to start the year, they lost to Florida um, out of the gate to a 6-7 and seven Florida team. They, they, yes, they lost to that Florida team. Anthony Richardson had one of, his better, um, bet, one of his better starts, one of his better games in his 2022 season on that night in the Swamp. But Utah bounces back. And I've seen people say that, you know, Utah will go, let's just say, 7-5, and 8-4 and four after this game. I don't know if I'd count on that. I really don't. Because Utah just finds ways to win. I know that they're not healthy. 
I know that in this game, unlike past games, they just got dominated. It wasn't like a close loss or a deflating loss in the sense that they could have won, but they blew the game away due to poor um, poor execution or maybe a bad play call. No, they just got flat out pwned in this matchup. 35-6, to a 29-point home loss. You know, Michigan lost to Ohio State by 29 points in 2019. Same caliber, same sort of dominance that Ohio State put on Michigan that year. Oregon put on Utah. And that Ohio State team, if they beat Clemson, would have had a better chance against LSU, the Joe Burrow, Jamar Chase, Thaddeus Moss, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, Joe Brady LSU team than Clemson did. Oregon went in to your house, if you're Kyle Whittingham, Morgan Scaley, Andy Ludwig, and Oregon just flat out beat you. They beat you with an empty with an empty glass beer bottle, broke the beer bottle, and then sliced you up with it. That's what Oregon did here. So to bounce back from this loss is going to be hard. It is, but they can do it. They have a great defense. This offense is capable of moving on decent defenses with their ground game, and Bryson Barnes is a serviceable quarterback. What was shocking to me the most is Oregon's defense, and I know this is the Utah segment. We'll talk about more of this in a few minutes. Oregon's defense it looks, I mean, they look terrifying. This, the, the, the Ducks' defense has flashes where it's similar to Dan Lanning's defense at Georgia in 2020, 2019, 2021. You get the point. If Oregon ever has that defense, they're winning a national championship. If they ever have that kind of defense either this year or in future years with the offense that they're able to create, and I imagine Ty Thompson's being developed well as well as Bo Nix has, Ty Thompson has, has been at Oregon for quite some time now, but his time is coming. Believe that. I can only imagine how good, how elite of a team Oregon can be. And like I said, Dan Lanning is getting better and better as a head coach, but so is Kyle Whittingham. Kyle Whittingham won the Pac-12 for the first time in his career in 2021 and then won it again in 2022. He keeps learning and adapting, even in you know, his age bracket, which is pretty close to retirement. He's hinted to the fact that he wants to retire before 2030. He doesn't want to die after leaving his head coaching position like Bear Bryant or Joe Paterno. He doesn't. Um, He, you know, wants that. He wants to have a good life after football, probably spend time with his family, so on and so forth. But he keeps learning and adapting. Utah is a good team even with all of these injuries. And if they had Cameron Rising, if they had Brant Cuthy, if Thomas Yasmin was playing better, if they had Lander Barton, maybe they could have stood a chance in this game. But I don't even know if that's the case. Oregon still probably wins this game, even in Utah's best-case scenario, roster health-wise. I mean, again, this was a phenomenal performance put on by the Oregon Ducks. You can't say anything less. Devon Vele... He's really come on. He has 281 receiving yards on this season, and he had 80 on seven receptions in this game. Bryson Barnes went 15 of 29 for 136 yards, two interceptions, no touchdown passes, 4.7 yards per pass. You you look at his quarterback efficiency rating, his passer rating, and, and how he's functioned, and then you look at the USC game and, and even the Cal game too, and you realize how bad USC and Cal's, but especially USC's defenses. USC's defense is the least, is one of the least efficient units in all of college football, including all special teams units, all defenses, all offenses, including every level, not just FBS, but FCS, Division II, Division III. For the talent that USC's defense has, they might be the least efficient unit out of every football division this year. If you say Iowa's offense, Iowa does not have five stars or more than maybe a small handful of four stars on their offense. Meanwhile, USC's defense has players like Damani Jackson and Bear Alexander, who are five stars. 
They have Christian Roland Wallace, Mason Cobb, Eric Gentry, uh, players who are four stars coming out of the transfer portal, according to 24-7 Sports, and their defense sucks. Oregon is clearly not USC. They were similar to USC last year. Oregon's defense really had a hard time getting opposing offenses off the field, regardless of caliber. The offenses remained, remained relatively stable, except I think Bo Nix has improved as a passer. The offensive line looks great for Oregon. The defense, though, that's what's changed. And for Utah, with the issues that they've had offensively due to injury, especially, but also to the fact that with if you're Utah and you don't recruit at a top 10, top 15, top 20 level, you can't reload every year. And departing production hurts. Dalton Kincaid, for example. Georgia can lose Brock Bowers, or maybe that's too extreme of an analogy, but they can lose Brock Bowers and they can have someone nearly replace him in his entirety. Utah can't do that. I mean, Utah cannot do that. It takes a rare program to not recruit at an elite level and replace guys at any position like they're nothing. Iowa can do that at tight end and defense, but you have to wonder if they do that in exchange for sacrificing the the remainder of the offense. And there are other programs that are an exception to this rule, but they're very few and far between. So I still think Utah has a great coach in Kyle Whittingham. I think everyone who watched this game or really paid attention to either Oregon or Utah knows that. This is just a bad loss. It's, you know, the snowball effect of multiple things that haven't went Utah's way, and Oregon was just the icing on the cake. So Utah can still go out and have a good season. They have Washington left on their schedule, but with how Washington's played... It wouldn't surprise me if Utah beat them in the same way that it wouldn't necessarily surprise me if Washington lost to USC, though I think with better coaching, I'd give Utah better odds to beat Washington than I would USC. Uh, Let's talk about Oregon football and then close out this video. The Ducks have an offense and defense that are elite. They had 390 total yards, five touchdowns. Bo Nix is a transformed quarterback. He's better than he was last year. And in big games on the road, Bo Nix, he has not thrown an interception. He has six passing touchdowns on the road against Power 5 opponents that matter. Utah and and Washington specifically, but I'm also going to count Texas Tech. I'm not going to count Stanford. Six passing touchdowns, no interceptions. He's completed more than 70% of his passes. He has thrown for in all of those games more than 200 yards, and he has had a 150 passer rating or better and a 75 quarterback efficiency rating or better in all of those games, along with a net positive in terms of rushing yards. That is a clutch quarterback. Clutch quarterback. Um, The loss to Washington, as I've already mentioned, was not his fault, and close games against Texas Tech were not his fault. The defense allowing 24 to Cam Ward and Nakia Watson in Washington State, again, not his fault. He's a transformed player. He's playing himself into the Heisman conversation right now. I'm excited to see what I anticipate could be, because nothing's guaranteed, but for Bo Nix to potentially get that second chance at beating Washington. Or for Bonix to face USC's defense, which I can only anticipate would be like a massacre. It would just be under 18, can't watch Oregon USC because USC's defense is just going to get beaten to a pulp and quit at halftime. Way too early prediction there. He's a great quarterback. And defensively, the Ducks are rising. Is this the best team in the Pac-12? If you haven't already answered that question, tell me in the comment section below, please, so we can have a conversation about it. Is this the best defense in the Pac-12? Is this the best team in the Pac-12? And if so, do you think they're going to reach the college football playoff, the Oregon Ducks? Oregon, mind you, was in this position last season 
they were. They had one loss to Georgia, a blowout loss, but Oregon was in position to that if they did win out and went 12-1, and even with that horrendous 49-3 loss. They probably would have reached the college football playoff and had a rematch with Georgia, a rematch that I think would have been obviously much closer than the game at the beginning of the season as Oregon progressively got better. And Georgia's defense did show vulnerability to LSU and Ohio State, great who had high ceilings on offense last year. Showed a great load of vulnerability. But then they lost to Washington, and they had a shot of going to a New Year's Six Bowl, and they lost to Oregon State, which forced them to go to the Holiday Bowl. So Oregon plays USC at home, a team who's this year, like, in my mind, a worse addition of last year's Washington team. And they host Oregon State rather than traveling on the road. Can they win both of those games? And can they win their other two matchups? You can't overlook anyone. You have one loss. Whether it's Cal, a road game against Arizona State, the Sun Devils have been playing multiple Pac-12 teams close. If you're Oregon, you cannot afford another loss. Your one quote-unquote free pass, only because the Pac-12 is very deep this year and Washington's still currently an undefeated team, you've used your free pass. You cannot lose another game. You can't. You have to go 4-0, and then if they go 4-0, they'll play in the Pac-12 championship game, and then you gotta you got to win that fifth game in Las Vegas, the final Pac-12 championship game before the conference disintegrates, and Washington, Oregon, UCLA, and USC go to the Big Ten, and Colorado, Arizona, Arizona State, and Utah, boom, they go to the Big 12, Cal and Stanford go to the ACC. What do you make of Oregon State and Washington State, by the way? Oregon State and Washington State as a rivalry will stay intact. I imagine Washington and Washington State will as well. What do you make of of the Cougars and the Beavers? What conference will they join? Will the ACC or Big 12 reach out to them, or will they join the Mountain West? I haven't been keeping tabs on that side of conference realignment. I've heard a report, a headline that said there's some mutual interest between the Mountain West Conference and Washington State and Oregon State, but I don't know how accurate that is. So please let me know of that in the comment section if you've heard anything. I look at Oregon and how they played against Utah and how they've been able to come up clutch, how they nearly came out with the win on the road against Husky Stadium. This team doesn't just have the potential to win the Pac-12 and to reach the college football playoff. They could go 14-1 and and win the whole thing. I'll tell you this right now. You put Georgia on the field with Oregon, I'm taking Oregon to win. Heck, if the spread were even in Oregon's favor and it was by a field goal, or n- no, no, that's too easy. If it was by four points, I'd take Oregon in a heartbeat to cover that spread. Oregon right now is playing at a different level than most of the country. They're playing with a level of efficiency that the Michigan Wolverines have, except Oregon has actually played a a team with a pulse in Washington on the road. I think they're the best one-loss team in the country by a mile. I personally, and you'll see this in my weekly top 10 video, I'm going to rank them in my own rankings, not power rankings, but my own personal rankings. Despite having that one loss, the head-to-head loss to Washington, I'm going to rank them as the best team in the Pac-12. The way they dismantled Utah and the way they've been dismantling other teams, you can not ignore that. And Washington struggled for two weeks in a row. Though I still think Washington right now is a top four, top five, top six team. I am a little worried about my preseason prediction of having the Washington Huskies in the college football playoff. But if chaos erupts throughout the rest of the college football landscape and Washington and Oregon both win out and Oregon beats Washington in a close college football playoff matchup, there is still a chance for the Pac-12 to have two teams in the college football playoff, as nutso as that sounds. Just some crazy things have to happen in the SEC 
or the Big Ten or the ACC or the Big 12, probably all four conferences or at least two out of the three or three out of the four conferences for that to happen. But I believe it's possible. Oregon can absolutely win a national championship with their current roster coaching staff and they're kicking they're kicking their football team into high gear right now thank you very much for watching this video i want to give a shout out to my patreon supporters if you want to support the channel feel free your support is never expected but it is always appreciated click the link down in the comment section below to check out my patreon channel thank you to spencer bringhurst noah ddlc and sfs inverted for being an all-american patron and thank you to Will Loftus, Gabriel Callender, Roaming Gnome, Matthew Sale, and Chris Lane for being all conference patrons. Have a great day, ladies and gentlemen, and fellow football fanatics, and I'll see you all around. Bye-bye.